those of you who are participating in this, this new approach we're using uh, to conduct our meeting, uh, welcome. It's Thursday night, April, t April 2nd. It's about 6.43 p.m. And I'm going to ask everyone to join us as we do the Pledge of Allegiance. Any idea what that is? Muted. I would like to ask everyone who's on the meeting to please mute their phones, please. We're getting a lot of feedback. Okay. Now, the procedure for questions, Diane. We talked about this. They should keep. They should do a use the chat. If you have a question. Uh, you want to get so that we can recognize you you can send a chat message in and Diane will officially let us know part of the reason for doing it that way is we want to make sure we're reading to the record who is speaking and who we're speaking to I guess um, roll call um, we have physically present with us myself uh, councilman uh, Valentis and councilwoman um, Rendowski and remotely, we have uh, Vice Mayor Jeff Hamara. I do not see Selena on this call as of yet. Selena, if you're out there, please let us know. Somebody's not muted. Somebody is still not muted. We're still I'm, getting some feedback. I'm on the phone. I'm here. Selena's on the phone? Yes. OK. So Diane, yes. please let the record show that all members of council are present. Yes, Mayor. For the meeting. Thank you. All right. Having said that, the the main uh, okay. Now we look. Is there any member from the public who may be on the line who would like to comment on non-agenda items? Because we really don't have an agenda. This is really going to be a report update. Is our main agenda item? But we do still want to give the public a chance to comment to the council, so if there's anyone out there in the public who would like to make a comment, I will ask you now to please send in your chat uh, question to us, and we will recognize you and try to respond if, if we can, or give you an opportunity to speak for two minutes. So we'll give this a few minutes to see if there's anyone out there who wants to I have I have here callers 01, 06, 08, and 09, and 13. Um, I do not have any names identifying who those callers are, so uh, my assumption is they probably are perhaps public calls. Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to progress, but I will leave the opportunity for public, co public comment open for the, for the remainder of the meeting. So if someone does come on, please send us a, a chat message letting know, us know what your comment is and that you'd like to speak. With that said, I'm going to turn over to our village manager to give us an update and for us to have a discussion on our uh, actions that we've taken, uh, our preventive actions or preventive steps, and what actions we need to take um, from here on, based on the current scenario and, and the uh, current orders that have come down from the state. So, Ray, Ray Liggins. Okay. Thank you, Mayor. I first want to start off with, you know, we've been at this now for 22 days. Palm Beach County EOC runs a, a, a telephone call um, for key emergency managers and, and, and an alternate or uh, two key staff members every day. Uh, we run them at, at 10 o'clock and and that we get the information from from the county and we get information from the health department and we share information among all the people that are on the call the call is hosted by the palm beach county league of cities richard uh, radcliffe and they're very informative L last week a question was asked or not last week at the last council meeting when i gave an update a question was asked about the measures that we were taking and does the health department uh, tell us what to do. 
And I answered that question in the negative, no, and that's how it was reported in the newspaper. I answered in the negative. What I didn't do was give further explanation, which after reading it in the newspaper, I kind of felt, well, that really needed an explanation. Um, the county health department is on those calls. They give us all the factual information and the update. Um, pretty much start the meeting off with that. Um, they're not at, you know, we've been on this for 22 days. They're not telling us you need to close a park here or you need to do this. But they give us all the information um, to make the decisions that we need to make to protect, our, protect the residents. And if it wasn't for that data and wasn't for that information, it would be very, very difficult. So I just wanted to put that out there. And I wanted to thank the county for, for, for hosting those, for the League of Cities to be hosting those meetings and, and uh, county EOC uh, facilitating them. This emergency is like no others that we had to deal with in the past. Hurricanes, we've dealt with, we've prepared for them, we have policy written. It's, it's almost a standard operating procedure, uh, preparing for them. Obviously, dealing with the aftermath of a hurricane, each one would be different. Um, but preparing for them is pretty much the same. This, we've, this was not one of those. Now we have the format in place, we have you know, the emergency management guidelines in place and all that, but we don't have a whole lot of policy written on this. So that's what makes these phone calls invaluable. And we have been having the, the county EOC ones, we've had manager uh, meetings, Palm Beach County City Management Association's had a conference call today, this is their second one. Um, and with those is what we're using to to kind of formulate the policy that we need going forward. The other thing that's kind of unique about this one is my dealings with the council. <laughs> In hurricanes, it's easy for me to spend more time keeping you up to date because the policy is written. This one was much more difficult and I've been dealing with a an enormous amount of policy decisions and with dealing with the staff, other managers, other organizations. Uh, so I, I Thank the council's patience in, in, in dealing with this and, and, and dealing with me. I'm sorry I probably haven't given you as much updates as, 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 you, as you deserve. I know that you're all in this and, and you want to help and sometimes it's very frustrating when, you, when, you're, when you're not there. And I, I, I thank you and I apologize for that. Coronavirus COVID-19. We do have a, on our web page, on our, on our, on our home page, uh, we have a, a, a banner on the top. That's what we're using is the, is the, to get the, the information out. In the, in the beginning, we had to figure out what do we put on there, because you know, there's lots of information out there and, and, and we, could, we could inundate our, our community with lots of information. So we've kind of narrowed it down. Uh, we do have um, our introductory letter from the mayor which really starts out with encouraging residents to, to utilize our online services. We've really upped our game on the online services so we could stay open because our buildings are not open. Um, so, so that's in there first. And um, the next thing we go to is, is, is an update section where we just kind of, we, well, we have our introduction and then we have an update section where we put the latest update. For today, the latest update we put on there was the new orders by the governor. The governor has, has uh, two orders out there that supersede everything else. Um, and, and, and now they are on, the web, on our web page. Um, they're, they're in the paragraph. You can hit a link on the paragraph or they're at the bottom where you can, where you can hit on. There's two of them because the first one was the order that tells us, what, tells us all the detail. The second one says, oh, by the way, this supersedes everything else. <laughs> so just to make it clear. Yeah, so. real clear. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. We have operational updates on on the uh, on the, on the the website, um, and then we have the online services. There's probably ten or fifteen of those that we have on there. They um, you can just click on each one of them, and then and for example, uh, the first one's public meetings. Uh, the next one's building permits, and it actually gives, you can hit that link, go to it, and you can actually go to a building permit and fill it out in PDF and, and submit it to us. Uh, building inspections. Uh, we still are open for business. We are still taking building permits. We are still um, inspecting. Uh, Rob Hill, our, our, our building official, has put some protocols in place to protect the residents and protect the inspectors. Um, 
code violations. Uh, we did cancel our code uh, magistrate meeting. Uh, all the ones that we had noticed for that meeting the last time I met with you, we did not cancel that. As this coronavirus progressed, we decided that we are not going to have a meeting where we're inviting the public you know, out. So we canceled that meeting. We're sending everybody a nice letter saying, correct your code violation prior to the next, next inspection sometime in the future. Thank you very much. Um, business tax receipts can be applied for online, RV lot payments, um, registration. Registration for recreation programs is there in activities, even though all of our recreation program and activities as of now are closed. Um, we, we are taking reserve the date reservations for our facilities um, start after May 1st, as of right now, that could change. Um, but right now we are not, no money, just to reserve the date. Engineering permanent information, planning and zoning, uh, contact myself, contact the council or the mayor. Um, contact Public Works, Parks, and then an employee link. The employee, the employee link is for all of our employees. They hit that link, goes to another page, and then with a, a, a two password authoriz authorization, you can they can get in, and, and we have information for our employees there, and then. The supporting documentation we have uh, our press release the mayor's press release and then executive order um, 2091 and 2092 from the governor i took off all the county's orders um, because this one supersedes and and the order 2091 which was the order that's all the, with all the detail in it that one uh, has all the attachments as part of the of the order let me uh so what does that order in general say? It, it, it directs senior citizens and individuals with significant underlying health medical conditions uh, to stay at home and take all measures to limit the risk of exposure to COVID-19. It directs all persons in Florida li to limit their movement and personal interactions outside their homes to only those necessary to obtain uh, or provide essential services or conduct essential activities. It does define essential services as referenced by the U.S. Department of Homeland Security and, and business and activities designated by EO 2089. But it's all part of that order, and, and you can go to that and, and read that. Um, it encourages individuals to work from home. It encourages businesses and organizations to provide delivery, carry out, and curbside services. It recognizes specific activities as essential. Um, such as recreational activities, pet care, caring for loved ones or a friend. Um, and, it, and it lists those in there, those, those activities. Uh, states that the social gathering in public space is not an essential activity and provides local jurisdictions shall ensure that groups of people greater than 10 are not permitted to congregate in any public space. Uh, it provides that the e Executive Order 2091 does not um, supersede any executive order related to COVID-19, but it, and it provides an effective date of uh, April 3rd at 12:01 a.m. So tonight at 12:01 a.m. it goes into play, into it's in for, it's in in play. Let's see what else. Section four of the uh, of the order addresses local orders in response to COVID-19. However, this section was subsequently oh, it was amended by 92, saying that this supersedes, this replaced with this order shall supersede any conflicting official action or order issued by local officials in response to COVID-19. So that's the governor's order in summary. The governor's order I think is 34 pages. So that's, that's it in summary. Ray, I have a question. Uh, it, when you read earlier, it said specifically people 65 or older are supposed to, they can't go out at all, is that what that says? No, the, the 65 and older was a previous order by the, by, not by, it was a previous order. I think it was a county order. Um, and this one does not say 65 or older. It says seniors, senior, the senior citizens. Um, so it doesn't, it doesn't give an age. But it's senior citizens 
and, individual, and individuals with significant underlying medical conditions. And then they list what they think they would be a significant um, underlying medical condition in the, in the order. Um, I can give you an example. <clears throat> but the, all right, the senior citizens and people with underlying medical conditions can what? Can't do anything? Senior citizens and individuals with significant underlying medical conditions such as chronic lung disease, moderate to severe asthma, serious heart conditions, um, cancer, diabetes, severe obesity, renal failure, and liver disease shall stay at home and take all measures to limit the risk of exposure to COVID-19. So how do we interpret that? They shall stay at home, but they can take essential trips. That's okay. They can get, take essential trips to doctors, okay, that, food, medical. I was asked this question a few times, by folks. That's why I think, well, I'm not very sure, to be honest. So. <clears throat> okay. The, um, who's, who's speaking? We, Keith Davis. Keith? Go ahead, Keith. You need to chime in on this, right? Yeah, I was uh, wanting to um, chime in and indicate, as, as the manager said a few minutes ago, the, the order, and it's Order 91, does define essential activities. Um, and it's attending religious services, participating in recreational activities, taking care of pets, and caring for or assisting a loved one or a friend. Uh, those are the things that are specifically listed in the order as essential activities that, that are, would be contemplated that you can still do um, despite the stay home, stay safe provision. And then the order also indicates that that list may from time to time be added to, and it, it indicates that um, the state coordinating officer will keep an online list of essential activities um, going forward. So th that's how the order uh, provides. Okay, thank you, Keith. Richard. Uh, Mr. Mayor? Keith, hold on a second. This is Rich Volantes. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Um, I just had a question regarding the order that's going in uh, place tonight. Is there anything in there um, or any direction on what the recourse is if people don't abide by it? Uh, these orders have consistently provided um, for state and local law enforcement to um, to be responsible for enforcing them. This particular order, number 91, uh, which is the one we're talking about that goes into effect at midnight, uh, actually does not contain that language. Um, but many of the previous executive orders have had that, that type of law enforcement enforcement language in them, but this one does not appear to have that. The previous <clears throat> orders um, were second degree misdemeanors. Correct. Okay, I did see a report earlier today um, from Sheriff Bradshaw uh, uh, on television. He reported that it is not the intention of the PBSO to um, to have to incarcerate anyone, but they could if they had to. So what he's asking is that people will uh, voluntarily comply with what the rules are that are set out and not go beyond the boundaries of those rules so it, things will work out. So at least that's the way he explained it in his, in his comments on that, on that question. And maybe I can back up a little bit here. I did this at the last meeting. I didn't start this meeting out with this. Is why why are we doing all this? I I, I think it's been talked about a lot, and if if, you, if you've been paying attention at all, you know why. Um, it's to keep the infection rate um, to 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 at minimum, and where our hospitals uh, can can handle the care. Um, there is a study. There is a study out there. Uh, from Washington uh, for Florida that, that shows that 
this next 30 days, we, we'll, we will be going up in the, in the infection rate and peaking towards the, the beginning of May. May 2nd, I think, is the date now. Um, the good news about that study is that there's, um, it, there was sufficient number of hospital beds to, to deal with it uh, if we continue doing what we're doing. Uh, it would not, you know, losing a loved one because they're, they couldn't get to a hospital would be, would be, would be horrible and, and would be a total failure. So that is why we're doing all this. Um, the, um, what next? What do we, the Village of Royal Palm Beach. We are open for business at this time. Uh, things can change based on orders that we get. Um, I'll just I'll go through through some of the departments right now and and um, Parks and Recreation. Obviously, the, the the biggest department that of the services that we provide that is just completely stopped. Um, all our parks facilities are closed until further notice. All our athletic facilities, lighting has been turned off. Our tennis courts, volleyball, soccer netting um, has been removed to discourage play. All our basketball goals have been covered by chains to discourage uh, participation. Uh, all entrances, gates to parks and athletic uh, facilities have been secured. Facility closed signs have been put in place in all parks and buildings. All restrooms have been closed. Um, and we place temporary fencing around all playgrounds. <coughs> uh, although the parks are closed, our maintenance, le maintenance levels are staying the same. Uh, I'll, the good thing about our maintenance levels in parks and in public works is April 1st is typically the day we, we, we switch from our, our winter schedule to our summer schedule. Uh, our, our summer schedule, because of the, the, the rain and, and the heat, is, is, is twice the the number of repetitions as the, as the winter. We do every two weeks, basically mow every two weeks in the winter, we mow every week in the summer. The good news is we haven't had the rain, so we can put off that transfer to the, to the summer mowing schedule, at least for now. Um, our recreation program and events and facilities, uh, all facilities are closed to the public. Refunds are being processed for the, for the programs that have been canceled in accordance with village refund policies and facility rentals uh, that were canceled due to COVID-19 will be refunded fully. So that's, that's for Parks and Rec. As far as our community events, um, as we know, the Seafood Festival was canceled, the first one uh, that was canceled. Our bike rodeo uh, was canceled. Um, our concert in the park and uh, gourmet <coughs> truck expos been canceled. Our um, seventh annual walk for Paul's um, is canceled. The uh, community yard sale, our movie night frozen um, is canceled and uh, the talent show is our april 25th uh, that will, will be canceled um, culture diversity day uh, i guess we, you know that's going into a month and a half from now so we're just kind of putting that on pause but you know we that event memorial day and then the, then the fourth of july Obviously, it would be our desire not to cancel them, but it, they will, depending on where we're at with, with um, the coronavirus, is, will determine whether they continue or not. So that's Parks and Rec. Community development, I, as I said before, we, we are open for business. Uh, the lobby has been closed to walk through traffic. Uh, we do have, we did put, um, oh boy, what's the name of the program? Door. Uh, Ring, ring door, ring, ring video doorbell on our on our entrances, so that anybody who does come to these doors can can ring the doorbell, and get a video response from somebody in there, um, and we can deal with them right then and there. If they um, have something to drop off, we will accept what they have to drop off. Um, if they if they want to set up a, a meeting or an appointment, we'll we'll facilitate that. Uh, any, any idea how much traffic we've had with that so far? Oh, I didn't check that. Okay. I don't know. But I know it's less. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, let's see. Building plan review, building inspection still ongoing with, with modifications. Yeah. Code enforcement, the meetings, as I said earlier, has been canceled. Business tax receipts, we're still processing online for that. 
Um, Just about the building inspection now. So current construction projects are permitted to continue? Current construction projects are, are allowed to continue. Um, and actually, the, um, and we did ask for an, interp uh, an uh, interpretation on projects not under construction, like engineering firms, can they continue work on, on projects? Uh, the answer we got back were engineering firms uh, can continue to work on projects and they fall into the category of the ar architects, um, accountants, and, and lawyers. And, um, and then, of course, they have, to, they have to abide by all the CDC guidelines and strongly encourage to do remote work. Uh, okay, yeah. one of the reasons I'm asking the question is do we are we projecting that there will be a freeze on any new applications coming in that would require continual work, for example, require a P&Z meeting or require your, your, your staff meetings that you have with, with applicants? We, um, we have not put a stop to all that yet. Where, where the questions have not been answered and we're dealing with this and our attorney's dealing with this and, and, and all the other cities is the quasi-judicial hearings and the testimony and the swearing in of the witnesses. Um, I, the little bit that I'm hearing, I'm, it, I'm not sure we could pull those meetings off. If we clearly had a meeting that, that we knew would, would, would gather a large crowd, Can you please we will cancel phone? it. Um, I think, I think that was our attorney wanting to cut in there, which is a good time to cut in there because they, Keith, were, is that you? they were legal things I was saying. Is that you, Keith? Who was speaking? I'm <laughs> Who, if so, so those quite those, those questions have not been answered yet. Um, I we're 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 thinking that we are going to not have at, at least the April meetings um, and and maybe even the early May ones. But we're 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 thinking that. Now, other applications that don't require the planning and zoning, um, or the or the meeting not the, 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 is not quasi judicial, then you know, we can may be able to continue those. Um, the I, the IS department has been been very busy. Um, they've they've set up our remote work employees and then the training for that and and configured and deployed uh, 20 take home computers uh, to date. Um, and training for those personnel. Uh, they have set up the network cybersecurity protection necessary for the remote work and, and, and continue to, to protect our system that way. And as you can see tonight, are working very hard to figure out how we can, what's the best platform to do meetings. And, Does anybody and hear anything here? We are gonna continue to explore no, that. And then the other cities are too. And everybody is everybody has asked that question. So, what's the best way to run a, still run a meeting? So, so we're all doing that. Uh, that's out there. Uh, planning and engineering or planning and zoning uh, is doing everything online, taking things you know uh, through email and 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 doing all their meetings through GoTo meetings. Um, we even do our stat. We even do we even do meetings in Village Hall through GoTo meetings. Um, so, so we're we are keeping the, keeping the, the CDC guidelines in place and, and keeping the, the interaction to a minimum. Uh, what else? Okay. Who's that trying to speak? I can't hear it either, but it's still going on. I'm watching the live stream. So. Jeff. Jeff, is that you? Unmuted. Jeff, are you trying to speak? Okay. Jeff Ramirez, speaker, is on mute. There it goes. It's open off now. I just opened it up. Jeff? Did you are want to say you, something? Are you asking me if I wanted to say something? Yes. Do you? Okay. Um, well, first of all, this was working pretty well up to about three or four minutes ago, and we lost the last portion of what Ray said. Um, on the uh, go to meeting, uh, but um, the one thing I was going to take us back to is just to ask for double check on the clarification with regard to senior citizens, uh, because the the reference essential services in that in that order uh, is specifically in reference to all Floridians. It sounds almost like the senior citizens and those with significant underlying medical conditions are under a more strict 
um, uh, kind of a, um, a limitation. And, and I'm, I'm hoping that, that Keith was able to kind of clear that up because I think that's where uh, the mayor was going with his questions. And when you look at the writing here, it really suggests that, that um, there may be a difference between the two, whether it's intended or not, just the way it's written. So if we can follow up and make sure that we understand that senior citizens and those with significant underlying medical conditions are allowed to do the same essential services that everybody else is, I think that's the intent is not clear in the right. No, I agree, Jeff. Um, that, that section one, safer at home, makes a Chief distinction is between now. senior sure. citizens mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. individuals with significant underlying medical conditions. Um, strictly speaking, if you if you took a strict technical read of it, it says those folks shall stay at home, uh, and then all persons in Florida shall limit their movements. To what's necessary for essential services and essential activities um you know not so but even if strictly interpreting it that way and somebody who is 66 years old went out of their house to conduct an essential service um i'm not sure we want to be arresting that person right that's that's reasonable and i, I understand that but yeah you know, the, the language is confusing the way it was written and I thought that was a narrow tone, but it'd be good to be double check. Okay. Okay. The the next section, the, um, so that's all as far as how we're operating, what we're doing. Uh, employees. Uh, we have 143 employees uh, employed with the village right now. Uh, we budgeted for 154. We not all of our part-time positions are filled at this time, um, or, and that's the difference between the two numbers. Uh, 44 of our employees we did s send home uh, on on reduced pay. 14 are doing remote work right now. Uh, we have four on on family medical leave, and uh, and then some, and then day to day. Obviously, employees have a choice to go on personal leave. The federal law. Um, there was a new federal law that came out that, that does provide for pay to um, employees that are affected by uh, coronavirus. It kind of falls into six different categories. The first three categories, uh, they get to, to stay home at 100% at pay for two weeks, and that's if they're quarantined uh, order by the, the federal government uh, or the health department, number two or number three. Um, they have um, all the symptoms of coronavirus and are seeking a medical diagnosis. The next three categories, uh, four, five, and six, are one, you're, you're caring for someone who's quarantined. Five is you have a child who's been uh, home because their school closed or the daycare closed. And then uh, six is you have symptoms, maybe not coronavirus, maybe they are, um, but you, you, on the side of caution, out for two weeks. Four, five, and six pay at two-thirds. Um, they're, they're good rules to have in place because they're to protect the people that are here. Um, you don't, it, this obviously spreads very easily and, and you don't want to infect your workforce. So, so they're, they're good rules. Um, we um, kind of expanded, we have a short-term disability program that kicks in at 31 days. Um, so what, what we're doing is if somebody does get the coronavirus, they are one of the unfortunate ones that, that have severe symptoms and or possibly go to the hospital uh, we're looking at extending that two-thirds pay or that um, the remain they get two weeks at the the hundred percent and then two weeks at two-thirds and then go would go on short-term disability or return to work the um, FMLA I think that that's all I have to, to say on that that's um, this is very very dynamic it is our goal to in, in the next week and then for the next month um, to get as many people as we can on remote work. Uh, for example, in IS, there, there's five people in there. They're all here now because there's so much work to do to set things up, uh, but I, I do anticipate them being able to go to remote work you know, in the near future here. And that's true for other departments too. 
Some of the remote work what we're doing is, 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 is somewhat sporadic. I mean, like payroll. You know, payroll can be on, on remote work, but maybe the day that we're doing the payroll that they're here. Uh, so we've got some of that, that, that going on. It's, it's, it's very dynamic. Uh, we manage it day to day. Um, it, if, we, if we lose some people because of the FMLA leave um, or, you know, they're sick themselves, um, we do have the ability to, to call other employees back and to fill those roles. Positions where we've had, let's say, four of the same position, we've kind of rotated those positions. So maybe one's here one week and one's not the next week to minimize the impact. Um, like I said, we are continuing to, to manage this on a, on a day to day basis. We feel we have a pretty good system in place. It, it wasn't easy. It's still not easy. There's a lot of, a lot of decisions to be made in dealing with it. Um, I've been very fortunate in, in, in the, the way that I think we deal with it here and, and a, a, you know, a strong, a dedicated uh, management team that, that we get to talk about this quite a bit and, and, and work through solutions and, and work through the, the what ifs and the, and the if nots and the if then what else. <laughs> and uh, so I think we've, I, I feel pretty comfortable where we are today um, in, in creating the platform. Now it's just a matter of, of managing it day to day and reacting to how this <clears throat> virus affects us, which could be different from day to day. Okay, <clears throat> um, I just want to go back a moment and give Captain Ayox. Captain Ayox, are you out there? Is he muted? He may be. Yeah, Mayor, I'm here. Can you hear me, sir? Yeah, okay, I, I, thank you. Um, I just want to give you a chance, if you wanted to comment on the question that we were talking about earlier about what actions would be taken if people were in violation of the, of the new um, uh, order that came down from the governor? Historically, when things like this happen, and I've experienced them firsthand when we had hurricanes many years ago, we try to generally educate the public, and we've been very successful with that. Um, it's very, very rare that we resort to having to take enforcement action. And if it comes to that, generally we'll be doing that on the back end through the state attorney's office after the fact. But I, I'd be very surprised if that happens. It's usually in the most extreme circumstances. Okay, I just wanted to give you a chance to let us to share that with us. Is there anything else you'd like to add? Um, anything that even that we did not cover or discuss? No, sir. I think the village manager did. Okay. All right. Thank you, sir. No problem. Thank you, Mayor. All right. Um, all right. I guess the question I have now then is. What's before us that we need to consider um, canceling or postponing or uh, to include um, um, council meetings going forward? In terms of what's in that pipeline, what, what, are there any statutory requirements we'll have to meet or address which would require a meeting? Or, somebody speaking? Uh, Keith, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Keith. Go ahead, Keith. Uh, the only the village code contemplates uh, one village council meeting per month um, is, is the one code provision that you have in terms of meeting requirements. So the, the modification or, or that came down from the governor that allowed us to, to not require a physical uh, quorum doesn't address what we have in our individual charter about how often we need to meet? It does not. It, that that okay. order is limited to the issue of a physical quorum being present, right. not holding the meeting in any okay. particular location, okay. and the use of communication media technology to conduct the meeting. It does not speak to whether a meeting is required at all in the first place uh, or not. Okay, so having okay, so based based on that, we've met our one meeting a month requirement with the meeting we're having right now. Yes, sir, you have. Okay, so at worst, we're looking at potentially our next meeting not happening until May, and I would probably say if we're going to project into May, it should be the third week of uh, the third Thursday, not the first. Everyone agree with that? Yeah. Selena and Jeff, you guys agree with that? 
we're looking at May 21st. I'm sorry, I didn't hear you. Selena? Yes, no, I'm here. Did you need to make a motion? Well, I'm looking for consensus about projecting our next council meeting that happening until May 21st. That's fine. All right, Jeff, I didn't hear you. Are yes, you shaking? I'm okay with that. You're shaking your head? Okay. <laughs> okay. All right, so at least we, we can look at that and, and figure out what, what the agenda would look like and um, uh, in, in terms of addressing that meeting. Um, one of the key things we want to look at is we would like to incorporate, and if applicants have to obviously participate in the meeting, have them, we would like to have them participate remotely as our first option. Is that correct? So we'll yes. continue to try to ramp this up. I'm looking at, at I'm looking at Marina now. <laughs> um, okay. Uh, any questions from anyone out there on staff? Or, or other members of the council before we move on? Keith, you're up. Uh, no, the only thing, uh, I, I lost audio when the manager was speaking about handling quasi-judicial proceedings, so I wasn't sure where we landed with that. Uh, you know, we prepared a, a policy document for handling these um, communication media technology meetings, and there is a provision uh, that, that addresses quasi-judicial, and the, the, the way that we wrote the policy is to discourage them in this format for due process and evidentiary reasons. Uh, but if, if, if we have to have it, there is a way to do it. You know, you, you swear witness. The witness that's remote would be responsible for being sworn in at their location. Um, and then we have to deal with, with handling uh, any documents or evidence. Uh, so it's possible. It, it just adds some additional challenges. And I, I guess that audio dropped, and I didn't hear where we landed with that. You got that? <laughs> yes, I do. Yes. <laughs> what he's saying is we did pass a resolution uh, on the, our communication as it relates to the order that was given, right. and, it, and it addresses it and notice, notices the public on how we would do it. Okay. Um, challenging, but, but and, and that's where if we had a quasi-judicial hearing, if it's something that could possibly be put off, that might be the better decision at that time. Okay. All right. Well, can I ask? Does ahead, that also sure. include P and Z meetings? Yes, it does. April meeting, right? Yes, it does. Well, do we need to have the April meeting for P and Z? That's we really haven't canceled it yet. Okay. Um, we're looking at that and what we have and what whether it's necessary. We're doing. We're going through that. Okay. Go ahead, Richard. I have a question. I guess at first directed to Jeff. I know sometime soon, I think it's the beginning of this month, there's supposed to be um, interviews for the scholarship applicants. Is that still going forward? The last I heard, we were planning on, we were planning on doing that as a go-to meeting. Everyone? Everyone. Okay. So I'll chime in if I can, just to say, yeah, that's, that's where we are right now. We've got 16 uh, applicants who will be interviewed uh, using GoToMeeting, and the members of the board uh, will also be attending via that app as well. So, uh, yeah, we're planning to go forward, and it is this, uh, this Saturday. Okay. Thank you. All right. You've got, you've got that the GoToMeeting thing. That's set up, and everybody will know how to, how to navigate that? Yes. Well, we're, we're dependent upon first two things. One is uh, this meeting was an opportunity for us to kind of get our feet wet. And so we you, got our whole body wet. <laughs> and, and secondly, um, I, I suspect that the applicants will have far less trouble with this than some of us will. Uh, uh, I think you got a point there. Most of us yeah. have had the experience. Uh, we we. We've got a pretty good confidence in, in being able to pull this off. Okay. Marina is sitting here. She's behind the closed doors over there, but she gave me the thumbs up that she's got you covered. Okay? 
whoever that was. <laughs> Did you hear me, Jeff? Yes, I, I heard you. That's, that's, uh, that's great. I'm glad to hear that. Okay, good. All right. All right. So, so I guess the question is back on the PNZ. When will we make a, de a determination on that? Let me look at see if I can like it. I don't have the calendar here. When's that meeting? Yes. 28th. I heard the 28th. 28th of April. Mm -hmm. Thank right, you, so Bradford. 28th of April. So that's, that's pretty far know. off, but it's pretty close to the peak of well, yeah, I, this. So. My inclination is unless there's a statutory requirement All right. that we not have that meeting because it, we just want to yeah. not have to expose anyone. So let's, let's work it on that. Everyone agree, everybody's shaking their, shaking their head. Hope Selena and Jeff, you guys are shaking your head yes, too. Okay? Yes. Okay. Whatever you guys decide is fine. And regarding uh, the, what's, what's it called? The sports committee? The athletic, what are they called? Recreation advisory. Recreation. <laughs> I'm sorry. They, their meetings have been canceled. Okay. All right. Lou, Lou Recchi, are you out there? Lou. Yeah, I'm here. Okay. You, you, anything you want to add to this this discussion concerning the rec, the rec, uh, recreation board? No, I think the only next big decision we're going to have to make is what we want to do for Memorial Day and Fourth of July. I think Memorial Day is in play, but not happening. And I hope by the Fourth of July we're we're in a different situation, but. In all honesty, my assessment of, and, and all of the information that's been provided from the, uh, the experts, the scientists, and the medical people is although the current rules in place have been stated in place for the next 30 days, I think we ought to kind of get a mindset on how we're operating and we should try to expect to sustain this model we're in now for at least the next 60 days. So stay tuned, film at 11. I got you. Okay. All right. Um, any other comments or questions for discussion for members on council? Selena, Jeff, anything else? No, you've covered everything. Thank you. Okay. No, I'm, I'm good. All right. Then I'd like to, I don't know if anyone is out there uh, participating in a meeting from the public, but I will give you one last opportunity if there's anyone uh, who's from the public, who's on this, this, uh, this meeting, would like to comment, I will ask you to let us know that right now, please. Going once, going twice. Okay, we're gonna close public comment for this meeting at this time. If there's no further questions from anyone on staff, anyone on council, thank you all for participating. Um, as I said before. Do we, wait, Mr. Mayor? Yes. Do we need to make a motion to only have the one meeting in May, or is that? No, we don't have to, we don't need a motion because that's our current uh, charter requirement that we have one okay. meeting a month. Gotcha, okay, thank you. I just, I just wanted a consensus on what our thinking was on what needed to be done, okay? Thank you. Okay, no problem. Um, what I was going to say is uh, I appreciate, appreciate everyone's patience and, and extra efforts that they're putting forth uh, to uh, help us sustain this model that we're operating under now. But uh, I will tell you, rest assured, we shall prevail and we shall continue to do what we need to do to protect the citizens in our village. With that, I'm going to say we're adjourned. Thank you all for coming this evening.